Uh, let's uh, begin uh, with the minutes from our previous meeting. Is there any uh, any feedback on those minutes? Nope. Nope. Okay, and they'll stand as presented. Um, and um, oral report on the um, deputy chief uh, job description. Sure, I'll start off and then um, turn it over to the chief for any additional comments. Um, but last night, the budget was adopted by the Board of Finance, and that did include um, a new classification for us, which would be the deputy chief position. Um, so the chief um, had been working with my office um, and did a really nice job in preparing um, a potential job description for the position, um, as well as doing um, some salary analysis with comparable positions in other communities um, to get to a point of being able to recommend um, a proposed um, uh, pay range for the position. So again, I think they did a really nice job. Um, we know that the police commission does have an interest in having an opportunity to review and comment on those materials. Um, and then Chief, I don't know if there's just anything else you wanted to add on that. Oh, nothing unless there, there are any uh, specific questions or specific things that you would like me to comment on. Um, Chief, what do you anticipate the timeline being for filling this position? Um, well, um, you know, ideally as soon as possible, but given you know, given the circumstances, I think that the, uh, you know, the recruitment process will be extended quite a bit because of, of uh, COVID-19. You know, I think, um, you know, bringing people, people in possibly to, uh, to interview um, is not the best thing to do right now. So, uh, you know, I'm anticipating, you know, maybe July, August would be, um, you know, that active part of that. And so hopefully by August uh, uh, of this, of this coming year. Okay. Any other questions? Um, just a question. I, I just thought of this. Is there anyone internally that would try to apply for this or, you know, potentially be promoted in? Is that open to current it, personnel? It is, yeah, it is, it is open and there are at least two people who would okay. be eligible for it. Yeah. Okay, good. And, and then someone mentioned it will go to the police commission for review. The job description. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. And this is this is uh, again where that you know that we've we've had some ongoing discussions and the police commission serves an important role in town and mm -hmm. um you know the the despite um the, the the letters are out there I think the the traditional path is I believe the police commission handles the personnel with the chief right um whether it be um, sergeants or lieutenants or or patrolmen. Um, and we've we've created a new position here, so we're just navigating the um, the space where the personnel subcommittee and and Maria obviously have Maria has the HR functions of the town. The personnel subcommittee approves all the job descriptions, but we additionally have the police commission, which has authority to to manage with the chief or help the chief manage the department. So it's a little bit of a nuanced process for this one. Right. Okay. Thank. Thank you. Yeah, some yeah. people and people ask us that all the time. It's like, do you guys have a say in the police department or not? Well, it's complicated. We <laughs> we do, but you know, the the professionals with with Maria and the chief um, and the police commission manage that department, and we typically focus on the rest of the town. But a uh, lot of lot of working parts, and obviously, the police commission is is a phenomenally well functioning and and highly capable group of folks that's that's worked really hard for a long time, and the commission has done a good job of helping us get to that point, so. So just from a timeline, um, I anticipate that the police commission would review on their uh, June 8th meeting, the June 11th meeting of personnel sub, um, we would review and then go to the full board of selectmen at the end of June. Any chief, other does question? That, does that meet your needs, Chief, in terms of getting ready and that, that timeline you, you talked about before? It does, yeah, it, it does. I think that will, I think that will work fine. Thank okay. you. Yeah, there's a little bit more bureaucracy here as as we're 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 good at doing sometimes. But yeah, well, and 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 you're right. It's a new it's a new position and uh, navigating some different waters here. Um, and then the other the other positions that we'll need to fill will will fall in line shortly after that. So that that time frame will work. Right, and those those are typically. I mean, those are not new positions, the lieutenant or otherwise. So you no. folks would handle that internally as as you yeah. do with all the other positions, right? Correct. Yep. And those are those are uh, internal positions only. And there are processes set up for that as well. Yep. Right. And that, but that doesn't mean that the town manager obviously isn't involved. She's helping out with with whatever your needs are as well. Right. So. Correct. Yeah. No. 
because you guys are, are, are a good team. So I appreciate yes. that. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Great. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is an oral report on, um, on the reopening in particular, um, uh, how staff are, are impacted in terms of coming back to our buildings. Great, thanks. Um, and sure. actually, Chief, since you are on such a roll, and so you don't have to stay for the whole meeting if you don't want to, do you want to start off with um, plans for police staffing, and then I can just kind of go into everything else? Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, so, so right now we're at about 20% uh, of the workforce is working remotely. Um, and so we will slowly start to bring that uh, some of that workforce back in. Uh, again, doing a, a staggered approach to this, whether it is um, day shift and, and, and uh, an evening shift or um, sort of a, an A-B throughout the week, but we'll be staggering the, the group back in. They have done a tremendous job working uh, remotely from home. Um, some positions have had to come in much more frequently than others to take care of some things that could only be done here in person. Uh, for instance, our record supervisor is in on a regular basis from one to two days a week where some other members have been able to stay out uh, much more uh, longer durations of time and they can take care of a lot of other things remotely. Uh, but we're looking for probably a little bit more guidance and a little bit more reopening of the state of Connecticut before we are going to stagger um, those personnel back in. Um, to what extent are you um, mirroring what's happening in other police departments in our area? It's fairly consistent. So um, there are um, sort of local chiefs of police organizations, the capital region, uh, as well as the state, the CPCA, and I'm on regular uh, meetings with them. And this seems to be the, the, the general course. Uh, nobody wants to rush right back in. Obviously the essential functions are being handled and have been, been handled all, all along. Um, uh, right in line basically with the immediate surrounding community as, as well. So um, we're all pretty much doing just about the same thing. Okay. Other, other questions for the chief? Okay. No, for Thank sure. you very much. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. All right. Um, so other plans, um, as most folks know and are aware, um, we do have a couple of our facilities that did recently reopen. Um, so at least I think in the coming months, I don't anticipate any um, major changes at the transfer station, um, our parks and trails or our tennis courts. Um, library is working on a curbside delivery system. Um, they're going to be doing a soft uh, rollout of that with materials that have been placed on hold um, prior to and during the pandemic. Um, and again, I think that we would probably be operating in a curbside delivery mode at least through the 4th of July weekend. And we'll reevaluate at that time. Um, in general, um, I don't envision our buildings being widely open to the public uh, much before 4th of July weekend. Again, we'll need to reevaluate. It could be later through the summer. You know, we could even possibly see through Labor Day. Um, but of course, maintaining our, our services um, either virtually um, by phone or through email. Um, and we are tentatively looking to bring back our administrative staff um, for Eno and Town Hall at uh, half capacity in the buildings around June 1st. Um, again, we're still working through a lot of these plans um, with our department head team. Um, but again, we're thinking that we would go to about half strength in our buildings um, for about the five weeks from June 1st uh, through 4th of July and then reevaluate at that time. Um, we would continue to um, screen customers um, as needed. Um, so if we do have a person who, for example, um, for some reason, they absolutely need to come in, in person, um, that we would screen them um, to see if we could accommodate them for an in-person appointment. So essentially our buildings would not be open for walk-ins as they normally, normally would. Um, and again, that's really just to, I think, you know, continue to protect um, the health and safety of our employees as well as our residents. Uh, let's see, our sewer parks and golf um, staff is currently at full strength, but just with modified practices. Um, during the pandemic, the parks and golf crews um, have continued to be at full strength. 
sewer was initially at half strength, uh, but due to the maintenance of the treatment facility, um, we did bring that crew back to full strength recently. Um, our highway and facilities teams, again, have been working at half strength and alternating work schedules. Um, since late March, um, but given that we, again, are coming into our growing and construction season and just with needed maintenance, it was um, becoming very difficult to, to keep up with the pace of work. Um, so again, we'll be bringing folks back uh, at full strength there um, the Tuesday after uh, Labor Day. Uh, for pools, uh, we are planning tentatively, this is very, very tentative, <laughs> um, for a possible um, opening on June 20th and summer camps uh, June 22nd. Again, there's just so many unknowns still with that. Um, again, we're, I think we're doing our due diligence. We're adequately planning and preparing, uh, but those are some soft dates for those potential programs being able to run. Real quick, Maria, yeah. um, is there, has there been any guidance come from uh, the state or elsewhere on, on pools or summer camps yet? So summer camps, we do have some, um, but pools, um, not that I'm aware of. Okay. And a quick oh. question on the, sorry, in the camps, wasn't there a date of June 29th put out by the state? You know, I saw that once yesterday, but all the other materials that Tom Tiberski and I have been seeing was June 22nd. So right now, okay. we're, yeah, it was, yeah see, it was originally June 29th and I was trying to research that. Yeah. You yeah. mentioned, yeah. Yeah, we saw that yesterday too. There was one source I saw June 29th, but um, everything else for right now we've seen is June 22nd. Okay. Yeah. So to that end, given that uh, and this is a fluid situation, the date could change, right? Yes, so absolutely. We've got, we've got some absolutely. exposure from some startup cost and then things change, but yeah. that's okay, right? I mean, we we, yeah. are, we all understand that. Right, exactly. Okay, exactly. just so people aren't surprised, you. you know, it, we don't just wait until June 21st to do the work to set it up for June 22nd. There's all this stuff and, and, and important work that happens now to get us ready for them. Right, right. exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So there's mm -hmm. a lead time for a lot of this in terms of either getting a program ready or staff ready um, or our buildings ready. You know, so for example, with our buildings, um, you know, we've been um, looking at any modifications that we need to do to workstations, mm -hmm. our hallways, um, supplies that we have in the buildings. Um, so again, there's definitely um, mm -hmm. a period of lead time for you know either bringing our program online or bringing up you know a potential building um, back where we would have members of the public joining us. Okay. Uh, and then the other one, um, which is our senior center, uh, and this is really unfortunate news, but understandable. Um, we There was a regional meeting of um, social services staff uh, with the health district a few weeks back. And uh, based on guidance that we're hearing, uh, it's probably the fall before the senior center would actually be able to reopen um, for programming. And a, perhaps a worst case scenario might be the end of the calendar year. So Again, we're monitoring that pretty closely, um, and if we find ourselves in that situation, I think we're going to, you know, be doing our best to try to, you know, see if we can expand, um, you know, some virtual programming for our seniors. Um, we have been doing weekly um, check-in calls for some of our uh, more at-risk seniors uh, while the senior center has been shut down, just to make sure that folks are okay, see if they have any unmet needs, and how we might be able to assist them. Um, so we'll definitely continue to do that as well. Good. Um, Maria, is there any, in, in, in all the reopening plans, is there anything that we're doing that's a significant departure from any of our neighboring towns that you're aware of, or how lockstep um, are we? Yeah, so no, I, I don't think there's really anything um, terribly significantly different. Um, you know, I'm probably, you know, trying to take a, a bit of a cautious approach. Um, and it's interesting, Melissa and I have been monitoring our reopening plans uh, within our city manager group, um, just to hear, you know, what other towns and cities are doing. And it really has been a pretty wide spectrum because we are essential services and our employees um, have been deemed essential. You know, some communities never shut down during the pandemic and they had all of their staff reporting at full strength. Um, and we had some communities saying that, you know, once May 20th hit, everybody was, you know, going to be back in the buildings, buildings are going to be open to the public. So it was sort of one extreme. Um, and I would say probably the more cautious, maybe other extreme is that we were hearing some communities were really kind of using Labor Day, um, getting through the summer um, and then kind of looking at that date. Um, we've sort of taken an in-between approach and we're saying, okay, like, let's you know, try to plan through 4th of July and, but, you know, obviously we'll, we'll need to reevaluate and, and see how things go. Um, yeah. So there's, there's a bit of a range, you know, in what we're seeing. Okay. I have a, just a quick question. Um, 
are we obviously we're all everyone coming back is wearing masks right mm-hmm. like, yes um are we and i know i i saw how the 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 temperature thermometers are going out to businesses are like are we going to be like you know i know we'll probably ask people their health feelings when they come back are we taking temperatures do we have any testing capability anything like that as we restaff up Sure. So um, a couple things on the face coverings. We've been so fortunate because we have had, um, you know, people donating face coverings to social services. So they've been supplying uh, face coverings and masks to our staff, which is terrific. And what we've also talked about doing as we start, you know, bringing more staff back to our buildings and perhaps seeing more um, customers by appointment by appointment only is that we'll keep a supply of face coverings on hand at every building just in case we do get an you know an employee or you know a customer who might come in and may have forgotten their face mask um, maybe at home or something of that nature so we'll have some on hand. Um, we do have some of our work sites currently that are um, doing temperature checks. Um, it's not something um, that Eric and I sorry other Eric who's on the call Eric Gomes <laughs> um, that Eric and I have um, uh, required at this point. Um, and it's something that we have had some conversations about with the department head team, whether it makes sense to do that at every work site or not. Um, but these are, again, some of the things we're still we're still working through. Good. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Maria. Oh, I'm sorry. There was one other thing. I'm so sorry. There's one other thing in my notes that I forgot yeah, to work. mention. Um, one of the other items that we're evaluating, um, and we've been discussing it with department heads and our town attorney, is could we go cashless for the summer? Um, again, just to sort of minimize um, transactional sort of work between our employees and our residents and our taxpayers. Um, and again, just to, again, further help minimize um, the risk of the spread of the virus. Uh, I don't think that's uncommon, right? We're seeing a lot of businesses who have gone to cashless systems. Um, but again, that for the summer, could we perhaps say you just, you know, no cash for the summer? Um, the department head team generally seems really comfortable and supportive of that approach. Um, Bob has said that we could do that if the selectmen um, supported us doing that. So again, it's something we're sort of working through some logistics. Um, If we think it's feasible, um, our hope is that we'll bring that to you for approval to potentially go cashless for the summer. Great. We should go cashless forever. (laughs) Honestly, from an internal control standpoint and from a process standpoint, it's better if we get rid of the cash, right? You're right. From an internal <laughs> controls perspective, cash is cash is risky. Yeah. Yeah. But so. but don't we pay? I mean, don't we get hit with credit card fees? No, we're we're a municipality. We get to pass. Oh, so you on. don't have to. <laughs> no, we we unlike businesses who eat those charges or bake them into their price, we we <laughs> actually we pass it on to the user. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking for my company. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, a company will bake it into the price, Wendy, right? Whereas um, we have, we disclose it. So when you pay your taxes, it's X plus the fee. Okay. So the town does not incur those charges. Okay. The taxpayer does, Thanks. unfortunately. But. Yeah. Oh, and we can still accept checks, though, as well. Yep. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. People still <laughs> write checks. Yeah, we do. We do get people who write checks. We also still get people who come in and will pay their taxes in cash um, just because they like they like to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice. Okay. Mm some theories on that but we'll talk about that (laughs) (laughs) all right well um maria and eric um strange times thanks so much for all of your work thank you Uh, okay uh is there a motion to adjourn so moved second all in favor aye aye